All right, I'll call to order our February State Special Service Recreation District meeting. Tonight is Wednesday, June 28th, 2023. All members of the board are present except for board member Worthen, who may be joining us online shortly. We're also joined by members of the council office. Mayor Burton is just outside the door. Just outside the door. <laughs> and various members of the mayor's staff are here as well. Uh, we'll start tonight with the uh, an, amending the budget for FY24. This is resolution 12. And uh, we'll hear about this from Ms. Stack. Thank you. Um, we are bringing to you an amended tentative budget. So you'd already adopted a tentative budget and it was based on um, estimates uh, that were I, I prepared um, or a budget that I prepared for you for Fairway Estates. Um, but as we studied it further, we recognized that some of those expenses could come down. Um, and so we're asking you to increase revenue so that uh, we can go through the truth and taxation process. We are asking for an increase of up to 10% property tax increase for this area. Um, and then um, reducing the expenditures as well. So uh, we're increasing revenue, reducing expenditures, and our use of reserves is about $2,000. Um, versus what it was before. So uh, we're happy to provide you more details on this, but overall the budget would have been reduced by about $9,875. Um, and so we're asking for you to adopt that and then also to set the public hearing date for August 22nd. So it'll be the same evening that we do the city's budget um, public hearing. We will also have the public hearing for Fairway Estates as well. That's where you will determine what property tax rate we will set. So thank you. All right, any questions from the, well, before before we get too far with questions from the council, just to um, kind of let you know where my mind's going. We do have some folks here who are from the, who, who live in this uh, special district. Um, we spoke about trying to add a slot for citizen comment. The, gen, the agenda doesn't have a time for that today, but um, historically the council has always been quick to amend agendas to allow for citizen comment. When I asked them when they would like to speak, uh, at the end of the meeting sounded like it would be most beneficial so that we can cover any questions, any information during this first item and then also the second item. Then I'll, after that, I'll be looking for a motion to open up for citizen comments. So just, just a thought unrelated to this resolution. That said, this resolution amends the tentative budget, sets the rate and the date. Is there any discussion from the council or perhaps a motion? Sorry, from the board, board member Green. I will move to approve resolution number 012, amending the tentative budget for FY24 and setting the date for a public hearing for August 22nd um, on the final budget. Second. We have a motion by board member Green, a second by board member Whitelock. Any discussion to the motion? I'm not seeing any, therefore we'll turn to Ms. Quick for a vote. Council member Whitelock? Yes. Oh. Board member, thank you. Whatever I am, yes. <laughs> Chairperson McConaughey? Aye. Board member Worden? Yes. Board member Pack? Yes. Board member Jacob? Yes. Vice Chairperson Bloom? Yes. And board member Green? Yes. I show that motion passes seven to zero. All right, that brings us to business item B, which is discussion related to administrative control board for the Fairway Estates Special Recreation District. This is one from myself and board member Green. We will start by hearing from board member Green. Please share your thoughts. Thanks, Chair. Um, the ordinance allows to have an, well, let me, re well, let me rephrase that. The ordinance and state statute in 17D allow for an administrative control board. The administrative control board can be delegated authorities uh, from the city, uh, I was going to say it's from the city council, from, the, from the, the recreation district board, which is still us. We still have, we are the ones that are responsible for most of the budgets and the taxes and anything else, but the administrative control board could help us administer the district. One of the things that I noticed is, and I think uh, 
it was the night that we were over at Fairway Estates, and I talked to these two fine residents for a long time after the meeting. Uh, and, and I recognized him because I, I know him from someplace. He was in the Air Guard. So, uh, but we talked. And, and one of the things that hit me is that what we don't get from the residents is good feedback on the, on the, the, the district itself. Uh, I think I, I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. I thanked Isaac for getting a basketball. The, the net the net got hung up, right? Uh, the, the, we were talking about that, and it's little things like that that make residents mad. But we could simply fix by having eyes and ears in the district that we don't visit all the time. And so my my thought was, and I, and I talked a little bit with. Uh, board chair mcconaughey is maybe we should look at um, installing the administrative control board my thought would be that we would be able to appoint a board of about three people um and and those those, that board becomes the i and and they they really become the feedback arm of the neighborhood to us and that uh, you know, the, the, the statute allows for us to appoint board members. They serve for three or four year terms, whatever. Alan's, Alan's given me the big four. Um, the, they serve for four year terms, could be actually appointed for a second time, I believe, um, under the statute and could serve eight. But it would, it would just give us a formal conduit to that neighborhood that, for example, Let's just hypothetically say that the neighbors all got together and they, they wanted to have a good neighborhood party. And they wanted the special service district to pay for the neighborhood party. And they wanted to raise their property taxes to, to, to have a neighborhood party with a neighborhood fair, you know, a night out against crime, whatever. And they wanted to have bounce houses and whatever. They could do that and, and, and communicate that to us. and. We figure out, well, if you want to raise the taxes to pay for it, we're glad to do it for you. If, if there's a sprinkler head that's broken, they can help communicate that. If there's a basketball net, they can help communicate that. If there's a something, so, and so I'm, I'm thinking that, 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 you know, we're the ones that uh, grant the powers to the administrative control board. Um, I think that for the most part, to keep the cost low, we continue the, the operations the way we continue it, um, but have that administrative control board be the eyes and ears of, the, uh, of, of us in the neighborhood. And then when we have meetings um, with, with the Fairway Estates meetings, then they're invited to the meeting and we put on the agenda. Uh, report from the administrative control board. They can tell us what they think about the district and those kind of things. And just, like I said, be our eyes and ears, be the, 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 the boots on the ground, if you will, whatever you want to call that, to, to, to have, because I think what I, what I learned from the, um, the, the interactions that we had with that neighborhood is that even the neighborhood themselves is a little disconnected from the, the, the district. There were some people that didn't even know they were paying, you know, that property tax line, they didn't even know what it was for. And, and so I think if we could engage some, some, some neighbors um, in that district um, as part, you know, part of those 57 homes or whatever's in that district, if we can engage a board that becomes our eyes and ears and provides us feedback um, then I think that that builds the better trust between us and the neighborhood and um, th there would be less frustration. That's my thought. So to anybody who's listening to this after the fact who lives in that district, I'd encourage you to go online to the city's website, westjordan.utah.gov. Click on the tab for agendas and meetings and look at the historical meetings. If you find tonight's meeting, you'll see that there's an attachment for this particular business item. Uh, there's a request for council action. 
that's a document that I highly encourage everybody to read because it gives a little bit more background as to why we're talking about an administrative control board. Um, it's kind of an interesting entity. Fairway State is kind of an interesting entity because a governmental entity was created, just like you have a state, you have cities, you have municipalities, you also have another government agency that was created, which is that Fairway Estates uh, Special Recreation District. And then by state code, you have to have the council responsible for that. And the council has taken basically all of the responsibilities, but there are some that can be delegated to those who are close, who are right there in, in that community. So. Um, that goes through some of the things they can and cannot do. Some of the things that have to stay with the city or with, with the legislative body, which is the city council, things like setting what that tax rate is. Um, however, there's a lot that can be done by the administrative control board. So I I'm, I'm, know we'd ask some questions to get a little bit of a feel from residents where they'd like to see things go, not just as far as property taxes to help fund the, the changes in what the amount revenues collected are able to, the services those are able to provide. But there are some other questions. Has that has that survey gone to the residents yet or where, where about is that? Um, that's actually tomorrow's task. It'll probably, that'll be one of Cassidy's last tasks is to get that to the residents by Friday. Okay. So we'll be sending that out to try and get feedback from everybody. Then we'll probably be having another um, Fairway States meeting to review some of the feedback that came through, um, both with that survey, but also encouraging folks to come here and speak in person. Um, I personally like the idea of having having an administrative control board. However, as noted in that request for council action, um, that does come with a little bit of additional an additional cost. Um, cheapest governance is always cheapest, it's not always best uh, to have folks who are there closer. Uh, there's compensation that's required um, by statute. So um, there, there would be an increase in cost there. So I'm really curious um, to hear what neighbors think, but is there anything the council wants to share on this? Any direction at this point or any other ideas before I ask for a motion to open citizen comment? In that case, um, I'm going to move to uh, open the meeting so that the residents can provide us some comments. Second. Motion by board member Green, second by board member Whitelock. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Not seeing any opposed. So if you are online, I do see a few folks who are online. Hit the little hand icon if you'd like to speak to anything regarding fairway estates. We're going to treat this as public comment for fairway estates. Um, I do see one person is dialed in by phone. If you are the one connected by phone and want to speak, it's star seven, star nine. So I always want to think it's chronological, like seven to raise, nine to unmute, but no, okay. Star nine to raise your hand to indicate that you'd like to speak. If you're here in person and would like to speak, just share your thoughts, share your questions. Uh, we'll have the same three minutes time that we did previously, but please come to the podium, share your thoughts, concerns, questions. We we really want to hear your input. So even if your input is just here's questions we have, here's what we're thinking about. Just uh, we would just ask that you uh, state your name and let us know if you're a resident of the Fairway Estates area. Yeah, I'm Larry Newman. I live in the Fairway Estates area as well. And uh, we just, we had a couple of questions. One, I really, I really liked the, what Mr. Green said about the administrative control board. That makes total sense to me. Um, I think that would really help. We, then we could organize our neighborhood and get together and kind of get their opinions and then just bring it back to you, whatever. I like that idea personally. Um, and I got, Miss um, Miss Stack got this, the information we wanted that we were really wondering where our money was going because we didn't have any idea where it was going. And so we've got the last few years here and it looks, it makes total sense. Everything on here looks, makes total sense. We have a couple of questions, however, and that is one was brought up was the water expense. It's about three to $4,000 a year we've been spending. We're wondering, is there any way that we could use culinary water or the secondary water for that, 
for some of that? Or is that, or is that a lot of work to even try to consider that? That's not a big deal. I just, somebody brought that up, so I thought I'd mention it. Depends on availability. We'll have the right member of staff get with you to, to see about feasibility of secondary water. Because we had that right in the neighborhood because the great school was using that. And I don't know if they still are. And that's where we're adjacent to that. But that was just a thought that was a few people brought up. So I thought we'd bring that up. That might help bring costs down. I don't know. The other one was the landscaping contract, which looks like it's about 9000 a year. And we don't really know if that's... You know, mostly that's for mowing the lawns is mostly what it is. And then as we, when we call them for tree problems with limbs or whatever, they'll come and cut those out. So we don't know. We, we were wondering, is that something that we could go out and look and try to find somebody that might be, that might be a lot less money than that? Or we don't even know if that money is a, a valid, you know, if it's a big expense or. We'll come back work. to that at, at the end of this time. Yeah. After you're done, I'll, I'll, I, I think I can help you with that one. And then the other question I had was on improvements if you want to improve the area. And I think that administrative control board could help with that area, just like you discussed. So that's really the only, only the really only question I had. Did you have anything else? Yeah, we just wanted transparency. And Ms. Stead caught us that. So I think we're okay there. So I think that's all I've got. All right. Thank you. Typically, we don't engage in back and forth, but in this case, where we like, we have some good response for you no sense in making you run around so council member green regarding your your contractor um what the what the city does is we put that out for bid and we uh we we get the contract it's the same kind of contractors that we use for our properties and um uh, for the rest of the city's properties and uh, we actually, because of the, the, the competitive bid process, we actually get a real, we, we get a really good bid for that. And so that they, they are, the, and, and, you know, it's the lowest responsible bid. Um, we always have a, a um, when we do put those out for bid, we normally have a procurement board. And Denise, my thought, my thought would be is that, if we decide to go to the administrative control board, if we're putting that out for bid, the administrative control board could also help us on that procurement process um, so that they feel like they're part of the procurement process. But in all reality, the, 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 city, uh, the, the city does, um, we do put the things out for bid according to state, state law and try to be as transparent and as inexpensive as we can with those bids so that um, nobody's getting gouged or anything like that. And they are the same, uh, these contractors that we hire, the same ones that we hire for when, because we don't do all of our landscape and uh, our landscape maintenance in West Jordan City. So that's where that is, if that helps. Sure, can I just add, um, it, because this is a government entity and Fairway Estates is, we are ruled by the state code, right? And the state code requires us to go through the RFP process. And so could you go out and get someone not in this form? We, it, it has to go through an RFP process that the state sets out for us. So yeah, that said, if there are specific folks that you think should probably be included or invited to respond to that request or proposal, you can always send that over. So. Are there any others who would like to speak tonight? I just have one quick question. Okay, please come to the microphone. Same thing, name, and if you're a resident of the district. My name is Dennis Thompson. Uh, sorry, the uh, right button. Yeah. There we go. That's better. My name is Dennis Thompson. I live at Fairway Estates as well. You mentioned before that we had that it would be an additional cost with getting the ACB. What do we, do we know what those numbers are? Because that would be important to people wanting to get that. So I I can, are there any other questions? No, no, that's it. So the note that's in here, there's that um, request for council action. And this is inside that document uh, under a fiscal note. It says the actual costs are unknown, yet the code currently requires per, a per diem rate for ABC, ACB members to meet, requiring contracts to be no longer than one year in duration, compensation for the city 
uh, are and compensating the city for their services rendered to the district. These cost center projections and human resource uh, and human resource needs in order to properly maintain fairway the state's district could be proper could be studied further based on board direction. So short of it is you have somebody who serves on the board, they need to be compensated just like council ends up getting compensated for this. Planning commission gets compensated for their time, same thing there. It probably wouldn't be substantial. Um, certainly not something somebody would do for the money, but there does have to be some compensation there. Uh, the planning committee, so here's, here's my thought. Three, three, three members of an administrative control board costs about uh, $200, and $25 a night to meet, you would meet four nights a year, thousand bucks. That, that would, we're not, talk, we're not talking substantial money. I, I would say that you're probably in the thousand to $1,500, um, in the thousand to $1,500 range to, because that the planning commission makes, isn't that right? 75, isn't that what the planning commission makes is 75 bucks per diem per meeting? If I remember right, well, on the board of adjustments is at fifty. So I think that somewhere, somewhere around fifty to seventy-five dollars per person per meeting night, and then depending on how often they meet. Yep. So that's one. And, and while a thousand dollars doesn't sound like very much money, um, their property tax revenue is only ten thousand dollars. So that could be a substantial consideration, right? That's ten percent right there. Yeah. And. But as Council Member McConaughey or Board Member McConaughey says, best government may not be the cheapest. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else wishing to address the board during public comments? Still not seeing anybody online, not seeing anybody else in person. Therefore, we'll close the public comment period. And now we will go on to Council Member or Board Member Green for a motion to move to approve consent. Second. Motion by Board Member Green, second by Board Member Whitelock to approve the minutes from our June 14th meeting. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I will rule that as passing. Is, is that the alarm that tells you that uh, Apollo Burger closes in an hour? Close. It was the three minutes uh, for uh, citizen comment wrapping up. All right, uh, with that, um, um, next item here. on the agenda should be a motion, motion to, to adjourn, adjourn, and that's what I'm making. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Yeah, but we'll, we'll open the RDA after this Second. meeting. We have to close this one. So, realizing we didn't require a motion to begin the meeting, that's why the thought was just close one, then I'll just launch right into the other. So, uh, so I think I second that. So motion by board member Green, uh, second by board member McConaughey. Although there's a question as to whether board member Jacob got there close enough, I'm still going to claim credit for ending the meeting. <laughs> all, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. All right. We are adjourned and we do 